playing the victim is like the best thing that you can do in global Western civilization right now. It is the best thing you can do. So this is the, the game that Greta Thunberg is now playing. So she's outlived the child prophetess routine because she's now the age of majority, which means I can make fun of her as much as I could possibly want to make fun of her, which is an awful lot because she's terrible. So Greta Thunberg got herself detained again. And this is a thing that, uh, that she does every so often now because she needs to be in the press. And she can't be in the press anymore for being a small child who dresses down and wears pigtails so she looks like she is six years junior to what she actually is in charge at the, the adult. How dare you? How dare you? No, no one cares about her anymore. So now she has to go get herself fake arrested. So according to Reuters, environmental campaigner Greta Thunberg, how, by the way, how is that an actual job? Like who pays you to do that? How do you get employed as an environmental campaigner? Like who pays you to just go get arrested at places? She was twice detained during a demonstration in support of indigenous rights in Oslo on Wednesday. Police removed her and other activists from the finance ministry and later the environment ministry. Hilariously, she demand. What was she protesting? I, I do love it when when the woke eat themselves. It, it is it is fun to watch when the when the far left radicals who hate the system, they start eating the system that they themselves have stumped for. So on Monday, she joined protesters, demanding the removal of 151 wind turbines. I thought she liked wind turbines. I thought wind turbines were everybody's favorite friend in the environmental community. I thought wind turbines were like the greatest thing. We should all attach them to the top of our cars and. We should, we should just go down the street powered by the wind turbines like a, like a giant pinwheel on the top of our, of our Ford F-150s. Well, she wanted the removal of 151 wind turbines from reindeer pastures used by Sami herders in central Norway. Whew. They say a transition to green energy should not come at the expense of indigenous rights. Well, I have some good news for them. There will be no transition to green energy because factually speaking, Norway is one of the biggest oil producers on planet Earth and their entire social infrastructure relies on them having a giant slush fund made of oil. The demonstrators have in recent days blocked access to some government buildings, putting the center-left minority government in crisis mode. Yeah, as you see, the revolution is ongoing because even central-left governments, not far-left, even central-left governments sometimes have to uphold the institutions that they purport to run. Uh, here was uh, Greta Thunberg happily being, uh, being quote-unquote, detained yesterday. <laughs> she looks very upset. Uh, what I love is all the, the the cops who are carrying her like, oh, I can't believe we have to carry on this dead white human. Is it that the cops are just carrying her around? She's like, she's enjoying herself. Again, another thing, my th a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of kind of comps to my three-year-old today. This is also what my three-year-old does when she just doesn't want to walk places. Just sits down on the pavement and then I have to carry her around and schlep her around. It's half my exercise. Thunberg, holding a red, blue, yellow, and green Sammy flag, was lifted and carried away by police officers from the finance ministry while hundreds of demonstrators chanted slogans. She told Reuters, quote, we want to make it very clear it is the Norwegian state that is committing the real crime here by violating human rights, by building wind turbines, wind turbines. Reindeer herders say the sight and sound of the giant wind power machinery frighten their animals and disrupt age-old traditions. And how is Santa ever going to have his reindeer if the wind turbines frighten away the reindeer? The, 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 mo the most delicious thing about the radical leftists who, again, feature the marginalized, There's a, there will always be marginalized. The marginalized shall always be among you. And what that means is, even if you build your new system, even if the center left is running things, even if they're as green as green can be, there will always be a more marginalized group that is out there awaiting a new radical to tear down the system, which is why it is worthy of, of note here that hilariously, Germany and Italy, both of whom signed on to all this green New Deal garbage over in Europe, both of whom essentially disconnected power plants and tried to move toward more environmentally friendly energy. And meanwhile, we're kind of shuttling in Russian oil through the back door. Well, now Germany and Italy are signaling that they're going to kill the EU's attempt at a combustion, internal combustion engine ban. According to the Wall Street Journal, a group of large European countries is threatening to block a plan by Brussels to effectively ban the internal combustion engine, endangering the bloc's ambitious agenda com to combat climate change. Germany and Italy said this week they could block the plan's formal approval at crucial meetings this week and next. Berlin said it would oppose the plan unless Brussels agrees to allow so-called synthetic fuels that can burn like gasoline and diesel, but spew fewer climate damaging emissions alongside fully electric vehicles. Now, the reality, of course, is that Europe is going to be reliant on oil for a long time to come. They do not have the geography that is necessary in order to support, for example, solar energy. Solar energy, we don't have the battery power on planet Earth to actually allow us to use solar energy as a substitute for hardier forms of energy. Also, Europe tends to have very short days at certain times during the year and not a lot of sun. It turns out that Europe is not actually all that land rich. 
So having wind power things is not going to do it. Well, we'll get to that in just one moment. First, let's talk about clarity. Well, our politics are increasingly murky these days, but your call quality should not lack clarity. Your call quality should be perfectly clear, and you shouldn't be spending a lot of money on corporations that hate your guts. This is one reason to switch your cell service over from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile over to Pure Talk. Pure Talk saves the average family over $900 a year when they switch from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. That is correct. You can save 900 bucks a year on your wireless bill and still enjoy ultra-fast 5G service. You get unlimited talk text and plenty of data for just 30 bucks a month. Pure Talk is so sure you're going to love their service that they are backing it up with a 100% money-back guarantee. Stop paying a fortune to Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. You can cut your bill in half with Pure Talk. Their U.S.-based customer service team makes the switch super easy. Switch on over to Pure Talk in as little as 10 minutes while keeping your phone and your phone number. Your first month is guaranteed, risk-free. Simply head on over to puretalk.com, enter promo code Shapiro, save 50% off your very first month of coverage. That's puretalk.com, promo code Shapiro. Pure Talk is simply smarter wireless. Restrictions apply. See site for details. And the coverage is great. I've been using Pure Talk for all my business calls. You should do the same. PureTalk.com, enter promo code Shapiro, save 50% off your very first month. So all of this kind of nonsense about how they're going to do this green transition, even Germany's like, yeah, we can't. See, here's the thing. The radicalism, it is a privilege of the, of the systems that you guys hate so much. All the radicalism, all the attempts to tear down the system, those only exist in systems that are already extremely wealthy and extremely, extremely beneficial to the vast majority of their citizens. Because then you get to claim that you are marginalized from a system that has generated enormous success. See, if, if no one is successful, it's hard to claim marginalization because everyone is unsuccessful. But if you can find a system in which a lot of people are very successful and then you claim to be marginalized to tear down the system, it is success itself that creates the marginalized who then claim that the success must be torn down. All the systems must be torn down. In other words, these are first world problems. And it is fun to watch as the first world problems swing back around on the left. There is never any position that will be so radical that the left will not take it in order to tear down whatever the prevailing system is. The revolution must go on and the revolution always and forever eats its own. Okay, meanwhile, on the Hill yesterday, Merrick Garland, the attorney general, came up to testify on his job thus far. He has done an unbelievably poor job over at, uh, over at the DOJ. Now, there, there is some, some kind of fascinating news that the Washington Post reported the other day regarding exactly how Merrick Garland is running the DOJ. According to Hot Air, did the FBI get a bad rap in the wake of the raid on Mar-a-Lago? According to the Washington Post, the raid took place only after months of debate between the FBI and prosecutors from the DOJ. The FBI argued a request for a full search of the property would have sufficed, according to two senior officials from the Bureau. But the prosecutors wanted a raid. The DOJ agreed. So remember the very non-political DOJ under the, the late Merrick Garland? He was supposed to be on the Supreme Court, but, but he's not, thank God. Well, prosecutors argued that new evidence suggested Trump was knowingly concealing secret documents at his Palm Beach home and urged the FBI to conduct a surprise raid at the property. Two senior FBI officials resisted the plan as too combative and proposed instead to seek Trump's permission to search the property. Prosecutors ultimately prevailed in the tug of war between two arms of the DOJ. And then the FBI conducted the unprecedented raid. So basically Merrick Garland's DOJ ended up pushing right past the objections of members of the FBI in order to push the raid. Of, of Mar-a-Lago. So Merrick Garland doing just an amazing job. Well, Merrick Garland had to sit in front of a bunch of senators and it turns out it did not go unbelievably well for him. So it began with Senator Ted Cruz grilling Merrick Garland on the fact that the DOJ really did virtually nothing to stop people from protesting outside the homes of Supreme Court justices in the aftermath of the leak of the decision that overturned Roe versus Wade. Merrick Garland could have arrested a lot of those people because it turns out that it is illegal to attempt to use intimidation against a judge. It's against federal law. He didn't do any of that. So Ted Cruz pushed him on this. And Merrick Garland, of course, had no answer. So you just said, yes, it's a crime to protest at the home of a judge. Same goes for jurors, by the way, with the intent of influencing a case. But in the wake of the leak of the Dobbs decision, when rioters descended at the homes of six Supreme Court justices, night after night after night, you did nothing. The department did nothing. When these same groups posted online information about where the justices worship, or their home addresses, or where their kids went to school, you again sat on your hands and did nothing. Your failure to act to protect the safety of the justices and their families was an obvious product of political bias. Hey, 
he happens to be true. That That's true. Merrick Garland got very angry, and then he's like, I want to answer the question. But his answer to the question was, I put people from the DOJ outside the justice. The, yes, but did you arrest anyone? Because I noticed that you're vi- you have a lot of eagerness to arrest people who disagree with your political point of view. This is the point that Senator Josh Howley from Missouri was making when he asked Merrick Garland about it. He said, you know, I, I noticed that you guys are perfectly fine targeting Catholics. That's that's it's strange. So you won't arrest people outside justices houses. You have no record of that. But you're perfectly willing to, at gunpoint, go and arrest a Catholic activist who was involved in a, in a bit of a in a bit of a tussle with a person who was insulting his 12 year old son. Here's Josh Howley going after Merrick Garland. We're supposed to hate long, long guns and assault style weapons. You're happy to deploy them against Catholics and innocent children. Happy to. And then you haul him into court and a jury acquits him in one hour. I notice a pattern, though. The FBI field office in Richmond on the 23rd of January of this year issued a memorandum in which they advocated for, and I quote, the exploration of new avenues for tripwire and source development against traditionalist Catholics, it's their, their language, including those who favor the Latin mass, Attorney General, are you cultivating sources and spies in Latin mass parishes and other Catholic parishes around the country? The Justice Department does not do that. It does not um, um, do investigations based on religion. I saw the document you have. What did you do about it? It's appalling. It's appalling. I'm in complete agreement with you. Well, then, um, why was it put out? And why does this seem to be, unfortunately, a pattern inside Merrick Garland's DOJ? All righty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into the question of why Sesame Street is featuring guests who really should not be around the kiddies, I think. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us.